Hinge, do I wanna show you my Hinge profile? I'll show you my Hinge profile. Tinder and Bumble, fairly similar. How's my profile on Tinder and Bumble? Let's not see anyone else. Okay, I'm a junior doctor just starting to get the hang of things. I spend most of my evenings making YouTube videos and singing Ed Sheeran bangers. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. It is that time of the year. We are doing the classic what's on my iPhone, my favorite iPhone apps genre-esque type of video. Um, I'm just gonna go through them in order because I've kind of got them in a specific order and I'll skip over the boring stuff like, you know, Facebook Messenger and Instagram because everyone knows what they do. But I'll talk about some of the more interesting apps that I've maybe like discovered this year or that I've been using in a particularly interesting way, in my opinion. Uh, so maybe you'll get some ideas about apps that you can install onto your iPhone or Android phone if you're one of those heathens but seem to be watching this video for some reason. Anyway, let's go for it. So. First of all, uh, oh, by the way, everything like timestamps, video description, pinned comment all around so you can like skip to things that you want to see if you really want to. Uh, don't feel like you have to watch this whole video because I have no idea how long I'm going to go on for. Anyway, number one, Fantastical is my calendar app. Um, it's not particularly interesting. It's kind of expensive for a calendar app. The main reason I like it is because it's got some pretty decent natural language processing, which means if I were to write, for example, first date with Jane, 10 p.m. at Fitzbilly's, it would recognize like all of the various bits of that. So it would understand the location, understand the time, and it's quite a nice way of dealing with uh, with events. Uh, I don't have a first date with Jane, I wish. Next, we have the app Drafts. And this is something that I've newly discovered this year, a few months ago, and I've been using it practically daily ever since. And the idea behind Drafts is that it's a very quick and easy note-taking app. So you hit the drafts button, it opens up a new note automatically, no having to faff around with the new note button. Then you can pretty much type whatever you want. And then that becomes a draft. And so then you've got your inbox list of various drafts that you can have on here. Um, and usually I keep this as a, as a sort of short term memory, RAM, random access memory type thing. So if throughout the day I'm having any kind of thought that I need to write down. So if it's an idea for a podcast or an idea for a video or just an idea of something in life or even like a little to-do list, then often the easiest thing to do is just open up drafts on my iPhone and then I'll write it down there. Thirdly, let's talk about Notion. Notion is probably my favorite app of the year that I discovered and I use Notion for a ton of stuff. I will link two of my other Notion videos in the video description. One of them is like an introduction to Notion and how it works, specifically aimed at students. Um, and the second is about how I use Notion as a resonance calendar. Uh, so if you haven't seen that one, I basically make a list of everything that's every kind of content that I've consumed, although that sounds really weird, content consumption, any kind of content that I've consumed, like books, podcasts, videos, whatever, um, that, I've, that, that has resonated with me in some way goes into my resonance calendar. So recently there was this Water Towers piece by Seth Godin, and when you add it to Notion, it automatically like brings the article in for you and leaves you a link to the article. Uh, recently as well, oh, there was this fantastic article by Paul Graham called The Lesson to Unlearn, uh, and it's got a link to that, and I need to take some notes on it. So. Essentially, anytime I come across something cool, it goes into the resonance calendar. I also use Notion for a ton of other things. So I use it as the idea refinery for my various kind of bits of content that I create. So I've got like this massive ass inbox of all the ideas that I'm currently working on that I've come across from various bits. Um, and then those might turn into ideas and then drafts and then email newsletters. If you wanna check out my email newsletter, again, link in the video description. And then once it's published, it goes into the published category. Um, I also use Notion to keep track of all my various videos and video ideas that I've got, upcoming sponsored videos, um, random video ideas. It's, uh, like essentially I use Notion to track my entire life and I'll be making loads of more videos about Notion throughout, throughout the next few months because I've just got like 10 different use cases for it. Uh, and every month or so I'm discovering new ways in which I can add Notion to my life. Uh, so yeah, probably my favorite app of the year. Anything else that I want to draw your attention to? Oh, this is kind of cool. Um, I have like this private life OS uh, thing whereby uh, I've started doing this thing where <laughs> I, uh, I have like a daily highlight of the day. And this was like a productivity tip that I picked up from the book, Make Time, um, which I'll link over here somewhere. Uh, and it talks about how it's important to have like a single highlight that you want to accomplish that day because you know, the whole point of productivity is that we're doing the things that we actually want to do and not wasting time on the stuff that we don't want to do. And so for example here, my highlight of the day was film, brilliant video, and Notion office hours at 6 p.m. So I kind of cheated and had two there. Um, but, you know, I just like to write down the one thing that I'm working on today. So for example, here, what is this? Um, Notion video, what's on my iPhone, Skillshare video, study with me voiceover that I've already done. Uh, and I just got a few different things that I want to work on. So I kind of, I've, I've, I'm trying to build a habit where I kind of check into my 
daily highlight thing. Uh, I haven't been doing it for the last 10 days because I've been on holiday and I feel it's, it's fair enough to not have, you know, a productivity mindset orientated goal when you're on holiday in Japan. Uh, anyway, yeah, that's what I use Notion for, basically organizing my entire life. By the way, thank you Notion for sponsoring this video. If you didn't see the little message that appeared at the start, just full, full disclosure. Next, we've got Todoist, which is my to-do list app. Um, I use Notion for most like project management-y kind of thing. So things that require my attention over a period of time. But I use uh, Todoist for things like call Nani, who's my grandmother, and water the plants, and sort out home insurance, and hypnotherapy, and you know, send my bill company an electric meter reading. So things like that. Also, if I ever need to make a shopping list for going to Sainsbury's or whatever, then I'll put it into Todoist. And I've sort of got different categories of different things. Like I've got this uh, weekly reminder to publish the weekly podcast and publish my email newsletter, which repeats every Sunday. So I try and check Todoist once a day just to make sure that I'm on top of the menial tasks that I need to be doing. Not saying that calling my grandma is a menial task, but I think, you know, it's nice to have that reminder every other day that I should probably call my grandma. The podcast player of choice uh, is Castro. And initially I was using Overcast for several years, but then I switched to Castro because the nice thing about Castro is that it's got this really good um, library and inbox feature. So I listen to a ton of podcasts, far too many to keep up with really. Uh, but what Castro does is that it, it gives you like an inbox uh, it's been a while since I've been through this inbox, but it gives you an inbox and you can decide based on the titles of that podcast. Call it in for geek. Where do you see yourself in five years? Let's add that to my queue. And you can add it to the top of your queue or to the bottom of your queue. So let's add that to the bottom because then it'll come up after I've listened to the stuff I want to listen to already. Become the leader you would want to follow. Ignore how to resolve conflict like a martial artist. Don't care. The moral philosophy of the good place. Don't care. Affiliate site showdown finding a positive feedback loop. So essentially I can go through all of the episodes that have come up in the podcast that I care about and then just sort of get rid of the ones that I don't care about or add um, add the ones that interest me to the top of my queue or to the bottom of my queue. And this is currently what my queue looks like. So we've got this Ben Horowitz interview and Tim Ferriss that I'm listening to at the moment, a few episodes of Bulletproof Radio, this episode of The Alternative CV, which is run by a friend of mine, uh, Noah Kagan, loads of episodes of The Derek Sivers Show, uh, which is one of his new podcasts, but each episode is only like a minute long. So you know, that seems quite intimidating. It's not really. Um, so yeah, that's my podcast app of choice. Next, we have Audible, of course. Audible, best source for audiobooks. I've just finished listening to The Dragon Reborn by Robert Jordan, so I need to buy another one on there. And I don't know, I've I've actually been listening to Audible so much. What was it? This month. Total, in total, in my life. Although I think that's just since I installed this phone. Perhaps in my life, I've listened to 13 days and 15 hours of audiobooks. Um, and on average, I'm listening to about one or two hours each day because I commute an hour to work and an hour back from work. And so I usually listen to Audible while I'm in the car. Next, we have Evernote, which I still sort of sometimes kind of use. So I use Evernote as the sort of long-term memory of my second brain. I'll link a few articles down below that talk about this in a bit more detail, and I'll be doing some more videos later on. But essentially, I've got like notebooks for all of the various things that I care about. So like, what is it? Uh, book club, book publishing, building a second brain, business, content creation, creativity, decision making, digital nomad, email marketing, entrepreneurship, essays, filing cabinet, getting things done, happiness, interesting life, learning, life advice, management, memory, money, online course, Patreon, personal finance, picky, PKM, personal knowledge management, podcast, notes, productivity, all of this sort of stuff. Um, and the idea is that when I come across stuff, I put it into Notion if it's like a resonance calendar piece. And if I'm taking notes on it, then I'll put it into Evernote. So that if I'm, I don't know, writing something about how to study effectively for exams, I can look at my, where's my, where's my studying thing? Oh, yeah, I can look through my notes for studying and I can find bits that I've aggregated over time from various different sources. So that's what I use Evernote for. Then we have Lightroom, which is the app that I use to edit photos. So here are some examples. This is a photo I edited recently. This is the before and after. You can see uh, if I, yeah, before, after. What was this one? This was a, a picture from work. So before, what? Before and after, and before, and after. And I tend to use just Lightroom presets and a few other random edits to edit photos for my Instagram page. So you can follow me on Instagram if you aren't already. Scannable is not very interesting. I use it to scan stuff and put it into Evernote. Day one is uh, interesting. Oh, hello. Um, so it's essentially a journaling app. So I've got like a journal that I'm not going to show you. I have a nice comments uh, folder where I screenshot nice comments that I've gotten from like YouTube and Instagram and things. And I put it into this journal so that if I'm feeling sad about life, I can just kind of look through my nice comments journal and that acts as a little pick me up. Bear, I used to use a lot before I discovered drafts. So I still sometimes use Bear for like long form writing. For example, 
if I'm taking notes on a book, like these were some notes I was taking on a cardiovascular physiology textbook while I was on an airplane, so I couldn't really use Notion because it doesn't have offline features. Um, or if I'm writing uh, features of my email newsletter, then I tend to write them in Bear. So this was from the 25th of November, 2019. And yeah, I, I just use Bear as a sort of long form writing kind of note taking hybrid sort of app. But I'm kind of phasing Bear out and sort of replacing it with Drafts and Notion together. Then we have Spotify, of course. Uh, earlier today, what was it? Oh, I was listening to this Taylor Swift song, um, <laughs> whatever it's called. Um, and then I've got my playlist for various years. I'll add my Spotify profile down in the video description as well. So if you care about the sort of songs that I listen to, this is my playlist for this year of being a doctor. Lots of Ed Sheeran, lots of uh, Elton John, bit of Westlife, bit of Lewis Capaldi classic. Um, yeah, Spotify, love it. Discord, recently started a Discord server. Um, so yeah, we talk, we've got like studying, We've got podcasts, we've got books, we've got productivity. Again, I'll link the Discord invite down below if you're into Discord and you want to chat. Uh, and this is just generally where I hang out. And yeah, it's, it seems it seems actually surprisingly active. How many people do we have online? Go away. Um, we have 228 people online at the moment. Um, and I think in total there are over 3,000 people that are on the server. So it's just kind of nice. It's a little bit wholesome. People sharing book recommendations, all that stuff. So I've been quite enjoying Discord. Medic Bleep is the confidential uh, messaging app that my hospital uses, so I'm not gonna be showing you what's in there, but it's really ideal because if, for example, I'm on call, then I mark myself as on call for obstetrics on the app. And so if anyone else in the hospital needs to get in touch with the doctor on call for obstetrics, they would message me uh, via the app directly. Let's put this on Do Not Disturb. MediRota is an app that, again, is a hospital thing to, uh, it's like electronic rotor management. So I check it every now and then and see, oh, am I on call today? Am I on call tomorrow? If someone messages me and says, hey, do you want to come to my birthday party on the 12th of January, 2020? I would say, sorry, let me check my rotor. And then I'd open up MediRotor and it would show me what my rotor is. MicroGuide is another hospital kind of app. Um, this is where our microbial guidelines are. So for example, let's say I need to prescribe an antibiotic for uh, sepsis of unknown origin, then it would show me what antibiotics I should prescribe. Uh, and this is this varies depending on which hospital you're in because the different bacteria growing in different hospitals and around the areas have different sensitivities to different types of antibiotics. So every hospital has its own like guide and conveniently my hospital has it on an app, which is ideal. Google Maps, boring. And then on the first play page, we've got Pocket Doctor, which is a few more guideline things for medicine. The BNF, which is the British National Formulary. So let's say I can't remember the dose of clindamycin, which is an antibiotic. I can type it in here, open up clindamycin, and it would tell me the indications, i.e. the reasons why you might give clindamycin and what doses I should give. So I often use this daily to check drug doses. Um, induction is again a hospital thing. MD Calc is quite good. It helps you, oh damn, I haven't logged in on here. But essentially it helps you calculate various things. So in medicine, there are hundreds of different scoring systems for different conditions. For example, let's say you've got a condition called atrial fibrillation. There is a scoring system called the CHADS-VASC, which is like 10 different criteria that decide whether you should get a blood thinner medication or not. And it's annoying to remember all of these criteria off the top of your head. So MD Calc is a great app for, you know, that just has all of these different scoring systems. And then we've got BMJ Bread Best Practice, um, which is another well medical thing because it's in my medical folder, but that has got like official evidence-based guidelines for loads of different things. So if for example, I see a patient who's got, I don't know, vaginal bleeding due to cervical ectropion, and I can't remember what all that stuff is, I will look up on BMJ Best Practice, which would tell me the evidence-based guide to how to deal with that particular condition. A little bit about the organization. So page one is usually, it tends to be the apps that I actively want myself to use or just apps that are just very quick access. So for example, I want myself to use Drafts, Notion, and Bear because that is me writing stuff. I want myself to use Lightroom because that's posting stuff for Instagram. I kind of want myself to use Discord because it's nice to interact with the uh, yeah, the fans, as it were. Um, but for example, I've got things like Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube on page number two. So that it just adds that very slight layer of friction that I have to swipe in order to go on Instagram, which means I I think if Instagram was on page one of my iPhone, I'd be going on it a lot more. I don't go on Instagram that much. I think partly because it's on page two. Anyway, I'll skip the boring stuff here, but Reader I think is interesting. Reader is my RSS feed aggregator of choice. Um, and essentially every blog that I read, uh, that I wanna be subscribed to, um, I add to my RSS reader. So I've categorized all of that by various different categories like better human, connections, design, doctor blog, fans, medical ethics, minimalism. Let's look at minimalism. We've got Becoming Minimalist, The Minimalist, and Zen Habits. So I can kind of search through it like that. 
Or what I can do is I can just look at all the various things that I've unread and I can go through the list. And the nice thing about Reader is that you can very easily, let's say uh, I discover this post from Shopify that, no, let's say I, this post from being, uh, why you don't need more time for self-care. Uh, let's say I wanted to read that, but I didn't have time right now. I would be able to immediately add it to Instapaper, which is what I'm gonna talk about next. And Instapaper is how I read stuff offline, essentially. So if I wanna read something, but I don't wanna read it right now, I will add it to Instapaper. And then when I'm like on the toilet or on the bus, or I'm just kidding, I don't take the bus. <laughs> I'm kidding, I do take the bus. If I'm on the bus or on the toilet or whatever, uh, I would browse, I would just go through my Instapaper and then I'd be able to read stuff. It's sort of like Pocket. I used to use Pocket for many years, but I switched to Instapaper because the nice thing about Instapaper is that when you highlight stuff, so here I've highlighted something, a hedge fund investor and red reader described the importance of letting go of financial security. I've highlighted that because it's resonated with me in some way. So I've added, A, added this particular article to my resonance calendar in Notion, but also what I've done is that it automatically syncs with Evernote. And this is very exciting. So there I've got a folder called Readwise, more on that in a moment. Essentially like what it does is that it synchronizes all of my Kindle highlights and all my Instapaper highlights into an Evernote note for each individual article. So this was an article from Wait But Why, how to pick a career that actually fits you. And instead of grabbing the whole article, which is like 10,000 words, it's just synchronized all of my Instapaper highlights and now when I want to return to this, I will just see my highlights. And this is incredibly useful. And the service that powers this is something called Readwise, uh, link down below. I don't use the app for it because they're developing the app, it's in beta. But essentially what Readwise does is that it, it sort of synchronizes all of your Kindle and Instapaper highlights, and it sends you an email every day with five of those random highlights. So it's a good way of revisiting lessons that you might have highlighted uh, when you were reading a book or something. Okay, so that was Instapaper. Next we have The Economist, which is uh, I don't really read it anymore. I should probably just get rid of it because I subscribe to The Economist. It's sort of like the Financial Times, sort of. It's like a magazine. You've probably heard of it. Um, because I wanted to become more like acquainted with current affairs and the news and stuff. And then I read it maybe once and then I never clicked on it since. So I'm just going to uninstall The Economist because realistically, who got time for that? Am I right? Let's delete that. I need to cancel my subscription for it as well. Anyway, next we have the Kindle app. The Kindle app is great um, because if I want to read something, uh, but I don't have my physical Kindle on me, then I will just read on the Kindle app. And at the moment I'm reading A Time of Dread, which is the first book in the Blood and Bone trilogy by, what's his name? John Gwynn. Yeah, the first, the first quartet, which was the Faithful and the Fallen series was incredible. So I finished that and now I'm reading um, of Blood and Bone, which is awesome. Uh, nice thing about Kindle as well is I can highlight stuff. Uh, so if I wanted to highlight that, I could highlight it. And then that would sync behind the scenes via Readwise into my Evernote notebook. Uh, but I tend not to highlight fiction because, you know, what's the point? Safari is boring, Instagram is boring, Messenger is boring, Twitter is boring, LinkedIn. Spark post is really good. Uh, it's this Adobe thing that I use to generate all the thumbnails for my videos. So you just kind of put an image or a screenshot or something, and then you can add text to it and you can add icons to it. And it just, it helps me get this kind of distinctive thumbnail style, which some people say is a little bit girly. Uh, but I think it looks quite pretty, so I don't mind if my thumbnail style is girly, but that's kind of what I used to make thumbnails. Teachable is for online courses, so there's a few different online courses that I'm subscribed to, um, like Rite of Passage and Building a Second Brain and The Fulfilling Path to Financial Independence by Rad Reads that I haven't even started watching. Uh, so this, in theory, lets me watch those offline. I haven't really used it too much on my phone because I tend to just watch stuff on the computer if I'm actually going through an online course, but it's nice having the phone app. YouTube is boring. YouTube Studio is for YouTube creators and it shows you your analytics and your comments and stuff. Tabs is really good because it gives you, oh God, I've got airplane mode on because I don't want anyone to see like messages that are popping up on my phone. But essentially tabs is sick because it gives you guitar tabs. Let's go off airplane mode. It gives you guitar tabs for pretty much any song in the world. And so if I decide, hey, I, I wanna play Blank Space by Taylor Swift, I will just go on this. I'll search for Blank Space by Taylor Swift. Oh, it's already in my favorites list and it would tell me the chords and I'd be able to play it on the guitar or on the piano and sing along and I can transpose up and down if a particular song is too high or too low for me to sing. Facebook is boring. Hinge, do I wanna show you my Hinge profile? I'll show you my Hinge profile. Hinge is like a dating app. Uh, let's not see anyone else because that would be weird. But this is essentially my Hinge profile. I'd be curious if you've gotten this far in this really, really long video, please critique my Hinge profile. So this is like my, uh, uh, my the, the first picture I see. I'm overly competitive about articulate. Uh, I've said I'm six foot, I think I'm actually 5'11", but you know, <laughs> a bit of uh, uh, being economical with the truth doesn't hurt. I'm not really a fan of this picture. I think I look really weird. Junior doctor, University of Cambridge, Muslim, liberal, awkward. Um, 
This is a picture of me and my brother at graduation. I geek out on Harry Potter trivia. This is some uh, nephew and niece of mine. The key to my heart is a midline stenotomy. This is a medical joke that a friend of mine came up with. It's not even me, so it's not even showing that I'm funny. Uh, this is a picture of me in Paris, and this is a picture of me playing squash in my jeans because I didn't have any kit with me. So yeah, let me know what you think of my Hinge profile and to see. Although I, I seem to be doing well. I've got 13 notifications on there, which means I think some people are messaging me or I've got a few different matches that I need to work through. Tinder and Bumble, fairly similar. How's my profile on Tinder and Bumble? Let's not see anyone else. Okay, I'm a junior doctor just starting to get the hang of things. I spend most of my evenings making YouTube videos and singing Ed Sheeran bangers. I think I wrote this ages ago, although I haven't actually changed it. Just a few pictures of me and my friends on my, uh, my older Tinder profile. Uh, again, let me know what you think of that. Um, Tinder not going so well as Hinge. Um, and then Bumble, again, dating app. I'm not gonna show you my profile, it's getting a bit old. Anyway. Um, Google Drive, boring. Google Photos, photos. Skillshare, uh, online courses, sponsor my videos. Brilliant, online courses, they sponsor my videos. Curiosity Stream, documentaries, again, they sponsor my videos. I like having access to these so that, you know, just reminds me that they're there and that I can use them. And then finance-wise, we've got Coinbase. I've lost so much money on Bitcoin, so I don't even open that anymore because it makes me depressed to see how little money is in there. Barclays for banking, Monzo for banking, American Express for banking, Zero for uh, accounting for my business, and my fitness pal. I don't know why it's in finance. It really shouldn't be in there because I was using that to track calories at one point, and then I decided I couldn't be bothered. So I've stopped using it, which is fine. And that's kind of all the interesting stuff. Like on page three, four, and five, and six, I've got just random apps and utilities that I use very, very occasionally. Is there anything interesting? Oh, one thing I completely forgot to mention, uh, my email app is superhuman, and that's this one over here. But yeah, so a, a Superhuman is great. It does cost $30 a month, but yeah, it's just the fastest and best email app. I use Deliveroo to order food. I use Just Eat occasionally to order food. The DJI app or to, for controlling my drone, you know, British Airways or Booking.com and stuff if I'm going on holiday. But that's pretty much all of the apps on my iPhone. Um, I hope you found something in there that was a vaguely, vaguely helpful. Uh, if you've gotten this far in the video, thank you for watching. Please do critique my dating profile because I'm still single, so I need all the advice and all the help that I can get. But thanks very much for watching. I'll put a link here to another playlist of like tech kind of app kind of themed videos if you're into that sort of thing. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.